Hello interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. I'm struggling for content this week, and thankfully Acer have come through with another dead Predator gaming laptop. Um, I don't know why, but I just keep seeing these things lately, but that's kind of how it goes in this business. It never rains, but it pours. Anyway, this is a Acer Predator Helios 300. This bandage I've put on the bottom is covering up user data, uh, and it's dead, doesn't turn on. So. I'm just going to quickly confirm that by plugging in the charger. Uh, and let's see. This has had a new screen on it at some point that someone didn't peel the peel out, off of. Concerning. Oh, well. Right, we've got no charge light. And um, I'm guessing if I press the power button... Yeah, it's stone dead. It's kill. Um, so, let's open it up and see what's inside. As the title of this video alludes to, I spent quite a long time going in the wrong direction on this laptop, so I'm going to drop in with some voiceover here and there just to explain what my, what my thought process was at the time and where I went wrong. So hopefully if you guys are having a go at a board, you won't make the same mistakes that I do in this video. We'll start off with just my initial assessment of the laptop and go from there. Screws out. Uh, let's have a bit of a... Oh, no prime required. I think that's just going to lift up. Coming off. Here we go. Here we go. Get off. There we go. Huh. It's a very blue heatsink. Okay. Right. Ugh. The hell ha Oh, yeah, another shop has been here, I remember now. Yeah, I think the customer mentioned that this had been in another shop, and they said that the board required repair. Um, that doesn't bode well. Um, okay, so we've got a bunch of... What is that? Is that... Yeah, that's flux residue. So someone has been down here. Let's hope that they haven't done a rehot bro on this. Trying to see what they were working on because, yeah, it looks like that um, that uh, inductor there has been lifted. There's heat damage around these capacitors. What were they looking at, I wonder? Okay, let's find out if we're dead in the water here. So, um, what can I get access to without having to strip this thing apart? So... Firstly, I'm going to put my black probe on ground. And we're just going to check the main input there. 130 kilo ohms. No short circuit on the main input. Fine. Right. Can I get to the CPU VRMs? No. I think we're going to have to take this heat sink off to really be able to measure anything meaningful. I want to know if we're shorted on the main rail. Because if we have a main rail short um, through a VRM or something like that, like if one of these VRMs is shorted, then we may as well just stop. Whenever you're working on a device that another shop has bailed on, it's always difficult to know what you might be getting into because it's impossible to know how good that shop is. Because, like, I'm not a miracle worker by any stretch of the imagination. I'm pretty mid when it comes to board repair. So... When someone else has bailed on a job, um, that is usually a red flag for me because, um, you know, as I say, I'm mid. So if someone else couldn't do it, uh, or someone else who knows board repair couldn't do it, that really doesn't bode well. Um, but then again, sometimes there are other shops who will say that the motherboard can't be fixed, but actually they don't know a damn thing about board repair and they missed something that was ridiculously easy. So, who knows? Although this does make me immediately sad because, as I mentioned at the start of this, it's uh, half past six on a Wednesday night and I don't have a video this week. So, I was really banking on content here. Eh? Come on. Just steer this around. Oh, oh God. It's the thermal goop. 
So let's zoom in on this a little bit and let's do a little bit more probing. So um, firstly, uh, this is GPU V core. So there's our GPU under all of that mess. Um, here's our GPU VRMs. Um, so previous person who took a swing at this was working down in this area. So let's just have a quick look and just see if there's actually a short there. I'm not going to take whatever I whatever they did as gospel because um, if you follow uh, if you follow information you were given, you might get led up the garden path. Like for example, whoever was previously working on this failed to fix it. So that either means that it's unfixable or it might mean that they were just simply looking in the wrong place. So let's not spend too long, but let's just have a quick look here. So this should be the main power rail. And we've got 0 0.2, 0 0.3 ohms there. So that is very, very shorted. And that is low enough. That doesn't look like a dead VRM to me. If we had like 1 ohm, 3 ohms, I would be screaming dead VRM. But that's really low. That is in That is go to injection territory. Uh, okay, so what do we get on these um, VRM inductors? So these are the power stages here for these VRMs. Um, these will act as a barrier. Um, so we sh because they have MOSFETs in and they are switching the power from the main power rail down to GPU vehicle. So on the other side of this, we'll see the, the GPU's internal resistance, which will be very low. What we want to do is we want to see a different value. I'm hoping for like 1 ohm, something like that. Here we go. Ooh, 0.3, 0.4, it's not good. So that might be 0.3, 0 0.4. Oh, that's 0 0.2 there. Okay, let's come back to... 0.3, 0 0.2. That's hard to tell. The GPU is really low. Let's have a look under the microscope, specifically at this guy on the left here, because that one has more markings around it. Let's see if we can see any signs of distress. That one might have been off of the board. Okay, so under the microscope, we can see that that leftmost um, power stage is a hot mess. Um, so really, so my current prediction is that the previous shop took this guy off and discovered that it was shorted. And if it's shorted, that means that the GPU is almost certainly dead. Um, but a lot of mess around here. I think I'm going to take the motherboard out of the laptop and take that power stage off. And we'll just see if we can get as far as the previous person did. But... Doesn't look good. Doesn't look good at all. Okay, here goes nothing. We're just going to blast this guy back off the board. And if our short circuit disappears, that means we lose. So at this point, I've started moving in the wrong direction. What I needed to do and what I should be doing when assessing a board is checking the secondary power rails as well, specifically the 5 volt, 3.3 volt and 1 volt power rails to see what state they're in. Because I've seen a dead short on the main power rail, I've stopped taking more measurements because I've found, an, I've found something and I'm now hoping that that is going to be the issue. But the reality is you should take additional measurements from everywhere else to gather as much information as you can before you actually do anything at all. The other thing here is that while I'm not completely wrong about spotting the GPU vCore rail being very, very close in resistance to the main, the main rail short, the reality is that 30 series GPUs actually have this kind of incredibly low resistance. I was expecting just under an ohm, but on 30 series, it really is like 0 0.2, 0 0.3 ohms. So that's going to be almost impossible to identify from a shorted power rail. So I'm not wrong in trying to confirm that the GPU isn't shorted, but if I'd been looking elsewhere at this point, I'd have found much, much more obvious symptoms.
Rather than going through the process that I'm about to go through in isolating the GPU, the correct play would have been to set my multimeter into diode mode and check the diode mode readings on the gate of each power stage. If I'd spotted any of the gates reading differently to the rest, that is a very strong indicator uh. that there might be a problem with that power stage, which would warrant further investigation. Uh, okay. However, as it is, I'm now going to go through the, all the faff of lifting a lot of inductors and power stages when actually there's nothing wrong here at all. Right, while the board cools down, question one, was this power stage shorted? So, that is the input pad, because this one was connected to the main power rail. And these pins along the top are the output, because uh, they are connected through to the VRM coil, or the, the inductor. So, are these directly shorted together? No. Okay. What about ground? I'm assuming that's ground. No. Okay, what about whatever that is over there? Still no. Okay, this guy is not shorted through. There might be nothing wrong with it. So what next? Are we just going to take off the RMs until the short disappears and hope for the best? I'm definitely convinced that it's in this general area because we've got what is effectively the GPU resistance to ground. I think one of these VRMs is, is kill. all the power all the vrms into gpu and gpu memory still shorted on the main power rail okay so what i'm banking on now is um this is why this is why silicon is spooky basically because um Silicon, and by silicon I mean like the CPU die, the GPU die, has a really low internal resistance. Um, I don't know why. Uh, I would be very interested to know why that is and the, the, the exact nature of that. Uh, so if anyone knows, I'd love to know. Point is, they're low internal resistance. And again, this is why if you measure any of the bypass caps on the back, or if you go into beat mode and measure vCore, it will beep at you and you'll be like, oh, it's shorted, it's dead. No, that's just what they look like. Um, however, by comparison, CPU, the CPU would be a better example of what I'm trying to demonstrate here. Hold on. So just in case you're not following here, let me show another example. If we measure um, CPU V core, so let's go to the um, so let's go to the inside edge of one of these guys. So our CPU core is sitting at 2.3 ohms. So that's really low, and that's low enough to make your multimeter beep in continuity mode. But 2.2 ohms is not the short circuit that we're seeing on the main power rail. We move up. So we're looking here. Let's go past the barrier of the VRMs up to the main power rail here. And there's our short circuit. So we know that it's nothing to do with the CPU because we're not seeing any path through these VRMs. However, the problem is, is that the GPU has an even lower internal resistance. It's, fun it's practically zero. I would normally expect it to be like, 
0.7, maybe 1 ohm, that kind of thing. So when you see like 0.2 ohms on the main power rail, which is what we have, normally I'd be like, cool, no problem, go to injection. But this guy is reading really low. Do I know what, what, e what even is this thing? GN20E5A1, what's that? That's an RTX 3070. So this is uh, the GA104, effectively. Um, so this is a very modern GPU, which may explain why it's so low. All right, YOLO, we're injecting. All right, I'm going to put my ground on this screw hole here. So we'll just tin that pad. And my hot wire, I'm going to put straight onto that power stage pad that we removed because that'll be a nice strong pad. Right, I now have two jumper wires with a short circuit between them. So I will now inject power from my bench power supply into these wires. And whatever is shorted on the board should heat up. And I will look at it using my thermal camera which is an Infrared P2 Pro. Thanks, Infrared, for the thermal camera. So as I start injecting power into the main power rail, there's no real clear indicators of a fault anywhere. There's no single component on the board that lights up like a Christmas tree, which is kind of what you want to see when you're injecting, a nice clear indication. However, what I do start seeing is that heat starts building up in the 1.8 volt regulator in the lower right. And what this means is that there's probably a fault downstream of that regulator. This also indicates that there's likely an issue with the regulator because power should not be flowing through it while the board is off. Like with the VRMs, it should act as a barrier separating out the main power rail from that secondary rail. So this does also tell me that we likely have more faults with at least this regulator and maybe other regulators on the board. Okay, so during that expedition there, this guy was warming up. It wasn't burning up. It was at like 28 degrees at 3 amps, but there was heat there. Um, so again, this is down in the general area where the previous technician was working. Um, they had lifted this coil. I'm wondering if they had mistakenly thought this guy was shorted. It could be. We're, let's start taking measurements, basically. That's the next thing to do. All right, so here's the guy that was going, running hot. It comes out of here into this coil, so it's a power regulator. Is this guy shorted? Yes, it is. There's our short circuit again. Um, so now's the point where we really could use some schematics to find out what this is doing. While I'm here, I'm also going to look over here. So there's clearly been rework around here. So what about this dude? I'm going to assume that this is shorted, or was the previous technician just in the complete wrong part of the woods? Yeah, that's also shorted. Okay. Okay, so this motherboard is an LAK862P. Um, bad caps to the rescue, as always, with the schematics. Thanks, guys. You're all legends. Um, and if I... Uh, thankfully, they also had a board view for this really uncommon to be able to find board views for PC laptops, but I'll take it. So this makes our life a lot easier because we can just reference the board. Um, so this chip that was getting hot, uh, this guy is our 1.8 volt regulator. Um, then over on the left here where the rework was, that's our 3 volt reg. And so this guy is going to be the 5 volt, which as you can see is our 5 volt regulator. So these are our uh, main secondary power supplies. This one was getting hot, so we're, we're suspicious that there's a short on the 1.8 volt power rail then. Um, however, ultimately, we should isolate all three of these to figure out which one is which. I'll just take a, I'll take a resistance check on, um, on all three of these inductors, and then we'll lift those three inductors and find out who is shorted. I would suspect this one because this guy was heating up. 1.8 volt rail is... 
1.3 ohms. Okay. Three volt rail. It's shorted. Okay. So uh, what I want to do next then is I want to... So since we've isolated the three volt rail, are we still shorted on the main power rail? Oh my god, we are, yeah. I mean, this red could also be dead. Um, we could have more than one fault. This is a rabbit hole we're, we're in at the moment. Um, okay, I'm going to take that inductor off completely. I also really want to sit all of the GPU inductors down and put that regulator back on the board and stuff just because we don't need to be there anymore. And I want to undo some of the work I've... I want to put, put back some of the stuff that I've taken off just to keep this under control. Because, like, the more you take off the board, the more overwhelming the job can start feeling where you're just like, oh, God, I don't even know where all of this stuff goes. So at this point, still hoping that I'm going to find some tr a traditional fault, like some bad capacitors somewhere, I make another swing at injecting, this time directly onto the three volt power rail. And this time something very interesting happens. Literally everything on the board starts lighting up, including another regulator that we haven't looked at yet, but also the 1.8 volt regulator. Now this is the clearest indication of the actual fault we have here which is a dead PCH, because the PCH ties all of these rails together. So if your PCH dies, it shorts everything together. And that is what is actually going on here, which is why we seem to have short circuits in literally all directions. Okay, so now we see all the things that the three volt rail coming from the jumper can be powering. So this guy was heating up, then this guy was heating up. UK1, that is trackpad, search, yeah, trackpad connector. So that's a regulator to power the trackpad. And this guy down here, what does this do? PC, that is CPU. Oh, by extension PCH, I think. This powers a, yeah, this powers a couple of secondary rails for this CPU and the PCH. So if the output of this is shorted, there's a good chance that the PCH is dead. Okay, can we get that far? Yeah, there's our old friend, the short circuit again. I'm going to clear this jumper down here to isolate the PCH and CPU from this power rail. And we'll see if that gets us anything. If they're shorted... I think I'm done because the only thing on that rail is the PCH and the CPU. We're 99% certain that the CPU isn't dead. However, um, it could be the PCH at that point. Okay, so regulator side, shorted, output side, oh my god, why is everything the same? Why does everything read the same? What does this mean? Uh, 
Okay, I'm calling it. This is a dead PCH. So where we've been working here, we've just isolated this jumper down here, PJ1101. If we take the output from that, firstly, it goes up to the PCH. It also goes over to the CPU here. But if we look at where it goes to the other side of the board, it comes up to this jumper. Okay, well, where does this go then? Surprise, surprise, it goes to the other side of the board back into the PCH again. Now, if we look at the PCH on the schematic, over here you can see where the PCH is getting its power from. It's got a crap ton of pins that are this 1.05 volt power rail here, and its other power source is the 3 volt power rail. Both of these rails are shorted on our board with seemingly no explanation and they both power the PCH. So at this point, it seems pretty transparent to me that we have a dead PCH. So that's where I'm calling this one. So um, whether or not the... There's a good chance that the other shop came to the same conclusion, in my opinion. Based on the lines on the board and stuff like that, um, I think that's the conclusion they drew. Um, it took me longer to get there because I didn't measure those basic rails first. Um, I saw a I saw a shorted main rail and went and went straight for the throat. And you know I've had plenty of success doing that, but in this instance it was a case of no, that was that was not it. Um, this one was just a dead PCH, and I spent a lot of time looking for an excuse to inject power. So that's where I'm calling it for this one. Um, I'm going to edit this together and hopefully um, it can be a, a good lesson in checking for a dead PCH. If you've got a shorted 1 volt and 3 volt rail, um, apparently that is very likely to be a dead PCH. I'm going to quickly put this board back together again and then I'm going home because it's heckin' 8 o'clock.